We don't think that bureaucratic responses, um, uh, public uh, participation processes, uh, the involvement of ward councillors supposedly in reporting back are working. Uh, so there needs to be new ways in which the politicians listen to people, particularly when people are involving themselves uh, in protests. The second point that I want to make in relation to what needs to be done is that repression won't work. It will not address the underlying problems and will intensify bitterness and alienation. And I think that's becoming increasingly clear to us. The police uh, can attack protests, they can kill people, but that doesn't stop those protests. And on a larger scale, it's not going to be stopping the kind of rebellion that we've been describing over a number of years. So repression won't work, it's not the answer. And our view is that we need thoroughgoing economic and institutional reform. Uh, the government has been our government for 20 years and when people are protesting now they are protesting uh, with the context uh, of uh, unfulfilled promises from the government. So what we are talking about is something much more substantial uh, than the NDP if we are to effectively address the problems uh, that concern people in South Africa and we need institutional form, reform at the level of cultural change particularly uh, at a local level but at national levels as well. From our database since 2007 there have been 27 protests in the Madibeng municipality 11 of them were related to water, and all of the protests in 2013 were related to water. So the municipality can't say that they were unaware of this problem. So what else must the community do? They've taken their grievances numerous times, and still nothing is done. So I think there's also that, there's only so many times you can knock on those doors and not get anywhere. There's a lot of unfulfilled promises, dashed hopes, uh, unmet expectations. Uh, we know that youth unemployment is about 70% and this is very frustrating and perhaps it's not surprising that most of the protesters are young unemployed people. Uh, of course, uh, conspicuous consumption by those who have more doesn't help. There's a joke in the township that when our president wants to build himself a house, he builds a town, a suburb, so you know people feel that there is money uh, to address their needs. And indeed, in one of the interviews, a, a protest leader in Pumalanga, you know, in Pumalanga they have this problem with water. He said, in truth, it's not just about water. This place, there is no development, no jobs, no hope, nothing. So you know, the protest issues also reflect, you know, problems with. Uh, our democracy. Firstly, that there's been an upward trend in community protests with a peak in 2012. Secondly, there is no clear relationship between elections and protests. Thirdly, community protests are not about service delivery, uh, but also not just about service delivery, but also raise concerns about the quality of post-apartheid democracy. Fourthly, there has been an increase in the number of violent and disrupt disruptive protests uh, since 2009. Um, and uh, violent and disruptive protests are the culmination of a long process of formal claim making. Uh, and then we've mentioned this very large number of protesters who have been killed by the police uh, since uh, 2004, a total of 43. And that doesn't include the 37 who were killed at Maracana. And finally, our view is that fundamental economic and institutional change is needed, not repression.